Dr. William Gumede, Associate Professor at the Vet School of Governors. Mr. Gumede, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Uh, thank you. What is your reaction to the President's address earlier? No, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of pressure to reduce, um, you know, the lockdown restrictions. I mean, the difficulty for, of course, for government is, you know, how do we get the balance between lifting the economy uh, uh, gradually, but also protecting the lives of people? And then secondly, whether government has the capacity to, you know, to deal with the increase um, in uh, COVID-19 incidences when it is, you know, lockdown is lifted. Well, from the president's address, uh, it does appear that uh, certain aspects of the economy and uh, the uh, fabric of society were overlooked. For instance, the, the social fabric of society and the social element of society and with regards to the fact that uh, nothing much was said about the poor. What do, you think that, what do you think the president should have addressed with regards to the issue of the poor and the vulnerable in South Africa? Absolutely. You know, so the missing element, you know, in the president's speech really was the president was not saying what are we what are we doing about, you know, people who are not getting food parcels on time. You know, people are starving, people are hungry. Secondly, you know, we are not rolling out the grants, the unemployed grants uh, to people who need it. I mean, across the country. Um, people are struggling to access the grants that government has made available for COVID-19. Uh, you know, they don't get it. And thirdly, how do we deal with potential corruption where even food that's supposed to be distributed to the poor are being hoarded by, you know, by either politically connected people or you know, uh, money, you know, the unemployment, the universal grants that people are supposed to get. You know, there's so much be phone into government departments they can't get through uh, inefficiencies. So the money is there starting because there's no capacity to give that money quickly in to people across the country. You know, the Reserve Bank uh, has projected a loss of about 370,000 jobs as a result of the continued lockdown in South Africa. And uh, this has severely affected the economic element of, uh, of the country. I, I, it now takes us back to our analysis of the efficiency of the lockdown and the continued lockdown. To what extent uh, would, it be, you know, would it be brutal in the economic aspect of the country? No, no, it's uh, absolutely... It's going to be very brutal, yeah? If we think about, you know, the 2007-2008 global financial crisis, more than a million jobs were lost there. I mean, this is in South Africa. So I think even the estimates from government is a bit conservative. You, you, we may actually again lose, you know, upwards to a million, maybe a little bit over a million jobs um, you know, because of COVID-19. But, you know, we can't do things, you know, it's, you know, we don't need to throw our, our, our arms in the air in total desperation to, as we can't do anything. I think the very first thing that we need to do right is that 500 billion COVID-19 uh, emergency fund, we must get it to the businesses that are struggling, get it on time, get it to them. So that will really help with the job process. Secondly, what we need to do is you know, ensure that there's no option in any government money handed to, to people. And then thirdly, we must actually make certain that we target the right companies for rescue. Um, so that rescue mustn't be based on political connections, political factions and family interests uh, and so on. And then fourthly, we really must focus on building new economy post-COVID-19 economy, we have to look, and, and how do we do that? We look at the industries that will not be growing under COVID-19. You know, new industries will be created, and then we have to focus on those industries. We have to uh, and put them in there, and we need to support entrepreneurs, not only big entrepreneurs, but small entrepreneurs.
You know, Dr. Kumed, uh, earlier on, I had a very interesting conversation with uh, Professor Muller from the Human Sciences Research Council, who said that, uh, you know, in some of the hotspot areas, for instance, the Western Cape province, we, I mean, we will migrate, we will remain in level four, in a, in a sense. In as much as the, the president announced that the entire country will be moving to level three, but uh, in a sense, uh, Cape Town, or rather the Western Cape, will remain on level four and uh, will be treated as such. And then on the other hand, I spoke to Saftu General. Secretary Mr. Zulinze Mavavi, who's saying that, uh, well, who is made an insinuation that we are actually on level two. It's just that the government is pushing its own propaganda because some of the sectors uh, which were, uh, you know, uh, at level two uh, will be allowed to open. So, what are your thoughts on this? Is there any propaganda that is at play here? You know, I wouldn't know anything, of, you, you know, my focus was on the propaganda, but I think what we need to do is to be practical and to be rational. So that we, you know, areas with no uh, uh, infections, so on, you know, those areas that decrease on the lockdown level, the areas identified as hotspots that we focus on energy there, you know, bringing the resources there and so on. So, we, you know, we must not allow poverty crisis response to be, you know, to undermined by political fighting or uh, and so on. We really have to see. we have to be rational and we have to be inclusive. We have to get the advice of as many people as possible. We must bring people on board. Let us now juxtapose the disease impact uh, versus the economic impact, uh, Dr. Gumede, in as much as the government has been severely criticized as a result of these continued lockdowns, saying that uh, it affected uh, so many sectors of society. But then would you hail the government's efforts of uh, putting people's lives ahead of profits? You know, it is a very difficult challenge, not only in South Africa, but also in other countries. How do you balance getting the economy going in order to create jobs and businesses running and prevent people from starving, and, you know, prevent high employment? And then, you know, versus that we have to balance that with keeping as many people healthy as possible. So, you know, it's, it's not a, there's no easy solutions on that. So the best we can do is to really be, use a real scientific evidence, uh, be practical, be pragmatic, and support, you know, areas, uh, you know, the weak spots, the so-called hot spots, support them and get our behavior right. You know, uh, uh, social distancing, cleaning hands. So the difficulty, of course, in South Africa, you know, the hot spots, where the virus is, you know, in towns, all settlements, people are not following, and it's rather, it would be very difficult for people to follow social distancing. Just think about tactics, minibus tactics. How do you manage social distancing in a minibus tax? Now, the problem is once we lift the lockdown, more people will use public transport. How would we manage that? Because we may then see faster spread because it's so difficult to manage um, social distancing efforts, you know, in those contexts. All right, Dr. Kumeta, thank you so much for your time and for your reflections. That was uh, Dr. William Kumeta, Associate Professor at the Vert School of Governance.